okay hi everyone so welcome back to the second lecture of my online machine learning lecture series so today i'll be talking about linear regression and um, uh, this is the first part of the lecture right so the first part um, i'll be going over just a recap of supervised learning the supervised learning setting and then i'll be specifically talking about linear regression and the setup of linear regression right there are three other parts the second part will actually go over the optimization problem right and uh, specifically for linear regression right but we'll actually go over the optimization framework particularly gradient descent uh, then in part three we'll actually go over polynomial regression right so it's an extension of linear regression to uh, basically consider polynomials instead of just linear functions and finally, in part four, we'll actually go over a hands-on uh, Python experimental session where we'll actually uh, take the house price prediction problem that I actually kind of spoke about in the application for linear regression right in the last lecture. So we'll actually go over the house price prediction problem. We'll, we'll take a data set and then we'll actually study linear regression and polynomial regression on this data set, right? So hopefully, I think the last part will be kind of... Uh, a, a, you know, fun thing to see to particularly see machine learning in action, right? So this will be the first time you'll actually see machine learning in action and in the context of regression. Okay, so I'll recap the supervised learning setting. So the supervised learning problem is that I have uh, my supervised data set x1 to xm. I think as we discussed last time, this is called the training data. And xm is my feature, or you can call it feature vector, and ym is my label, right? And the goal of supervised learning, this is also something we discussed last time, is that we want f of xm to be a good approximation of ym, right? And what do we exactly mean by good approximation, or rather how do we capture the good approximation depends on the loss function, as we, we shall see. Okay. And uh, the goal of machine learning is to actually learn this function f so that you can actually predict the values or predict the labels on previously unseen x values, right? So we don't want to just memorize the training data, but we actually want to generalize in some sense to unseen data, right? So we saw this last time, this is classification and regression, okay? So uh, just getting a little bit deeper into classification versus regression, okay? So again, I have my x1 to xm, which is my training data points, and I have my xm in Rn, right? So this is my feature vector. All right, so in regression, I have my label ym belongs to R, right? So it's a continuous real number. Whereas in the classification case, my ym belongs to zero to k minus one, right? So that means that this is basically k class classification, in the case when k is equal to 2, we get binary classification, right? So this is binary classification where k is equal to 2. And for general k, this is multi-class classification, right? So we also saw last time some examples of supervised learning, right? So in particular, we saw examples of, you know, classification. So we saw spam email detection, right? So I just kind of, again, just to refresh, in the case of spam email classification, k is equal to 2, right? So we just want to classify between spam versus no spam, right? Handwritten digit recognition, here we want to select amongst one of 10 digits, right? So in this case, actually, k is equal to 10. In the case of medical diagnosis, we saw last time whether we want to predict whether it's diabetes or not, right? But it could be cancer or not cancer, or, uh, you know, it could be basically a bunch of other diseases. So in most cases, this would be again binary classification. Again, fraud detection is binary classification, whether it's fraud or not fraud, right? And finally, face recognition is actually typically multi-class, right? Because you want to predict amongst k different persons, okay? Then uh, today we'll actually go over house price prediction as a, 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 we'll actually go, go over a data set for house price prediction. So we'll see this in action, but there are other um, regression applications as well. For example, stock market prediction, weather prediction and market analysis and business trend, right? So a lot of these can be posed as regression problems. Okay, so the critical thing is that uh, we want to understand what the hypothesis space is, right? So 
in in machine learning this is this is also called the model right so basically is a set of allowable functions that we will consider so once we make a modeling assumption we are going to consider functions in this class so for example today we are, we are going to see functions of the form f of x equal to a transpose x plus b right this is also equal to a dot x plus b so this is the class of linear functions right um, we can also see a kind of extensions of this so for example polynomial functions which we will actually go over in the third part of this class okay? so polynomial functions are extension of these but all of these are essentially classes of f so once you make an assumption of the model f right then you basically want to solve uh, the optimization problem corresponding to this so, so the kind of critical question over here is to be able to select the right model for the application okay so so now we'll kind of recap uh, the supervised learning workflow right so the supervised learning workflow is step one where um, we will actually collect the training data right so training data comprises of samples x1 y1 to x n y n okay so the the, the the way this works is that um, we assume that there is some unknown probability distribution p of x y which is in some sense a generative way of looking at it right so there is this underlying probability distribution that we don't know about that we want to learn right and this generates the data p x y Right? So based on this, we have samples x1, y1 to x and y, right? But in reality, we have a bunch of data that is running around, right? And when we take this data and then we actually have a human, right? So there is a step where the human labels the data. So the human will actually provide the y labels. Now keep in mind that in certain applications, actually a human does not really have to label it, right? For example, in the case of house price prediction, we kind of already know the price of a home, right? Of course, there's a human involved because there's a buyer and a seller who kind of agree on the price, right? And there's a historical database of price of, of homes that have been sold, right? And then we have the features corresponding to those homes. So we can learn this basically this function that learn that that has the the price of the home, right? But in in in, in some sense, you can think of this as if there's a human involved that provides these labels to us. Right. So the kind of most important step over here is this one where we need to collect the training data. Right. The right training data can actually break or make the learning system. Right. Once we have the training data, then the second step is actually select the model class, what we discussed in the last slide. Right. So we have the selected model class. If it's a linear model, then my model class is a linear class of linear model. Right. So the first is to select a model class, but the second is to actually select a loss function. Right, so a loss function basically measures the distance between the output and my predicted value. Okay, and in some sense, once I have a loss function, I can then pose the learning problem to actually minimize this sum over my training data of my loss of f x i comma y. Right, so this is the learning algorithm over here. And again, I think the loss function here is essentially a distance in some sense, or how close my predicted value is to true label right so i want to make my f as close to my label as possible right and then i'm i'm, I'm optimizing over it so in some sense this one is i'm searching over all f right such that this this distance like the average distance on my training data set is minimized so this precisely is my learning problem that I want to search over all my hypothesis classes so that I can actually basically minimize this objective. Okay, and the way we will actually look at the search problem is by posing it as a continuous optimization problem. And this we'll actually see in the next in the second part of um, this lecture. Okay, the third step then once we have done this. Is actually to do the testing right so the testing so the part one of the testing is to obtain the predictions on all my test data right so once I have my f right so in some sense my f is I basically obtained from my training algorithm once I have my f I actually get several of these test samples right so I just write down several so I get several of these test samples and then once I get several of these test samples I have my loss function and then I measure my loss right so then you can also compute basically that, um, okay, so um, this step is basically obtain predictions, right? So this is step four, right? So obtain my predictions on all, 
on all my test data points. Right? And once I have this, I actually do a sum and then I, I actually use an error metric. So I, so I can use actually L, right? But, but optionally, I can also use an error metric. This is like T, right? And then I'm actually summing over all my test data points, right? So this will give me my average error. And this is how you can compute, say, the accuracy, right? In the case of classification, the accuracy, but in the case of regression, we'll see this is called root mean square error, right? In fact, it is nothing but this L function itself. There is one more uh, term that, the, uh, one more evaluation measure that is used in the case of regression. It's called R2. And we'll actually look at it in part four, where we go over the uh, kind of hands-on section, right? Um, anyway, so once I have a kind of suitable error function, I want to actually measure the error. Right? So I think this is the kind of critical steps involved in my supervised learning workflow. And we'll use exactly these steps. Uh, we'll look at an instantiation of this for regression. Okay, so now I think we are kind of all set to actually get into regression. So we have a simple linear regression setting where I take my input, right? I have my training data set x1, y1 to xn, ym. Uh, these are my features, these are my labels, right? And then again, my hypothesis space, the set of all functions is fx equal to a transpose x plus b, right? In, in, in one dimension is just a x plus b, right? So here I'm also assuming that x belongs to r, okay? So, so note over here that actually a belongs to r raised to n because x also belongs to r raised to n, right? Also, if you can call this d actually, so sometimes you can also call basically r raised to b and uh, x in R is to be, uh, I mean, I'm using n and d interchangeably here in the notation. Okay, but if these are d-dimensional features and I have my a as a vector and x as my vector, right? And then we kind of looked at this last time, the error metric and the loss function is actually the square distance, right? So that means that the loss function between my f of x comma y, right? This is my um, predicted value and this is my true this is exactly f of x minus y square. Okay, so this is just the square distance. It's called the square distance. Okay. So I hope that so far so good. And, and, and you know, until now things are pretty clear. Um, this is re regression. Typically, you have data like like this kind of lying all over the place, and then you have one uh, kind of true solution. Right. So this will be basically there will be a unique a and b which will be obtained by a searching problem. This is also called optimization. This is optimization of a searching problem and this will give me my a comma b. And a critical thing over here is that the value of b actually is the intercept, right? So it's this distance from zero to the point over here and a is my slope, right? So a is my slope. So this is slope comma intercept is, is one way to think of it. If, if you've seen kind of fitting of a straight line, right, in physics or kind of basic math, you will remember this. And, and this is exactly the same in higher dimensions, right, in the case of regression, linear regression. Okay, so the question is that I want to be able to search over all my uh, A comma B to find the right A comma B that fits the data. Okay, so what do I mean by fit the data, right? This is exactly what I mean by fit the data. So the, so, so for any data points a, x, my learning algorithm predicts f of x, right? So the question is, how do I find f, right? What is f? Well, we saw last time that we are considering the case where f of x is actually a uh, dot x plus b, right? Um, here in this case, I'm actually, um, I mean, I just call this like a dot product, right? Or you can say transpose. Okay, if it's just uh, one dimension, then it's a x m or it's a transpose x m, right? So I have this as my loss function, right? We saw this last time. This is my loss function that I'm minimizing. Uh, this is one over m because um, actually I, I can say that n goes from one to m. So there are m training data points, right? So there are m training data points, and this is sum over the m training data points f of x m minus y m square. Right, so this we saw, this is the squared error. Okay. Then the optimal linear hypothesis is actually obtained by minimizing A and B. 
right? So this is the searching problem that I, that, I, that I spoke about. So this is the searching or the optimization problem. Okay, so I'm minimizing over A comma B such that this term gets minimized. So it's A transpose Xn plus B minus Y and the whole square. Okay. So the, the question is, um, we, we have this term, right? So how do we solve? So in some sense, this slide is about the optimization slash searching. So I don't know if you have seen one uh, kind of basic optimization or uh, kind of optimization class, but uh, even if you're not, it, it's fine. One solution to do this is actually to take the derivatives and to solve, right? It turns out that there is actually a closed form solution. I won't actually go over that because anyway, that is not something that is really done as much in practice because it involves actually taking an inverse of a matrix. Um, but the second solution, which is actually using gradient descent, is what is done more in practice. Right? And in fact, this slide says exactly that. So, so, so the gradient descent approach is the thing that we, we are most likely to use in practice. And actually, this we will see in part two. Okay. All right. So I think uh, I, I will end the part one with this just to recall, right, the motivating one motivating example for house price prediction, um, kind of getting it back in the context of the linear regression that we have set up so far. Right. So my Y now is my price of the home. Right. And X are my features. So the features, for example, are actually location. This is probably a very important feature, right? So where uh, my my house is located, maybe the zip code, for example, right? Then maybe uh, my other features would be, for example, the size of the home, right? Number of bedrooms, bathrooms. Then um, <clears throat> another feature could be, you know, uh, the, the HOA dues, maybe property tax. Right, maybe crime rate, so neighborhood, right, blah blah blah. So you can come up with, and, and, and I think this piece is what is actually called feature engineering, which I think after basically collecting collecting label data is in some sense one of the most important parts of machine learning, right, to, to get the feature engineering correct. Right? Um, all right, so with this, we'll actually end part one. And we'll next go to part two where we'll actually look at optimization.